Okay, so the process here is to determine what is our exposure. The uh, research out there is extensive, and you can see the list there of things that firefighters are exposed to. So the real question becomes, what can we do as firefighters to protect ourselves and our colleagues on the fire ground? So the research is unanimous. The exposure to fire ground toxic gases and polycyclic aromatic hydrocarbons is extensive. And if we do not mitigate our exposure to those, then we are at great risk of getting several types of cancer. The best way to mitigate our exposure is to decontaminate our gear on the fire ground and make sure the fire ground stays there and does not return to the station, therefore further exposing others. The three universally recognised decon methods are air-based, dry brush and wet soap. Air-based has no significant effect on removing the toxic contaminants, so we won't discuss it in any great detail. The dry brush decon only removes a median of 25%. An issue presented with dry brush decon is the fact that some airborne particles may actually create a greater exposure to those not directly involved in firefighting operations. Wet soap decon is the most preferred method based on research across the globe for the fire service industry. It has a greater effect on removing contaminants. In fact, 85% of polycyclic aromatic hydrocarbons can be removed with wet soap decon. So this is our preferred method moving forward. This graphic further represents how much more effective wet soap decon is to the other two proposed. To provide an overview of the wet soap decon method, we got together with Alexandria Fire Station, Redfern Fire Station and the CO2 tender from Piemont Fire Station. We tried to make the scenario look as real as possible, so we had a, a fire truck arriving to a large tower with smoke issuing. We just deployed two firefighters in BA and a charge line into the tower and effectively these two firefighters would become our decontamination test subjects. So they enter through the door, this is all real notional testing. They're simply going in to simulate the door entry. While they're inside and committed and the motor driver has time, they begin the process of setting up the what we would refer to as stage one decon. So a, a clearly delineated space using witches hats where firefighters can be directed to. Now, as part of this, they would perform their own gross decontamination. So that same motor driver takes the first aid line and places it near there for when they work. exit, they can commence that part of the decon. Another option is that when the firefighters come out, if they're not reallocating their hose line to another crew for another tactic or other consideration, they can come out and use that same line as a decon method. So the concept is to use copious amounts of water, making sure that all of the gross matter, all that visible stuff, comes off, boots are clean, etc. So we saw that example there. If they handed that hose over, then again, they can both move to this designated area for stage one, where again, the same process is followed. So it's not a duplicated process, it was just two different examples. One where they come out, and here's the second one where they both could have come here. So they're using a certain amount of water, making sure getting into all the the crevices where particulates and that gross contamination would sit on top of the cylinders, uh, across all the leading edges such as your shoulders, um, waist belts and harnesses around the VA section. From there they move on to what we'd call stage two or it's really the final stage of decontamination where we have a second crew and uh, brooms, uh, buckets and brooms and with a soapy mixture, once they're wet, 
they are now pretty much deconned um, from head to toe. Notice how extra effort is made to get into um, all those extra areas around the top of the cylinder, the back plate, all the strapping and webbing, um, all the bits where um, you are likely to be re-exposed again. Remember when these air sets are going back in the cab, maybe not now, but certainly once they've gone through another decon process, um, maybe back at the station. Um, but it, it's a very thorough um, decontamination process. You can see by the amount of suds that are there, um, the effort that's gone into making sure that everything is clean. And then once your, your decon operator is happy, um, which is a, really a, a visual inspection, th then the wash down will occur. So once all the soap and residue is removed, um, I ideally everything should be off. Once the crews are decontaminated, they can now move to a safe location to disrobe and doff their BAs. Um, it's important not to bag the gear up at this point because there's still potential for some off-gassing. So as those BA sets come off and that gear, that gear should be left out to uh, vent, for want of a better word. Um, so if it can be left out either hanging up or in the sun, it's nighttime. if you can hang it out somewhere, then that's the best option available to us at this point in time.